In this video, we're going to go through a quick example on determining the section capacity of a member which is subject to pure compression. So uh, as you can see here, we have um, our section laid out. It is a 610 UB um, by 101. Uh, you can see the section properties here with the depth, uh, the thickness of the flange, and then uh, we can work out what our, our various off stands are. Um, and so obviously these are, you know, section geometries are just coming out of the section property tables. But if we're looking at the section capacity uh, for an element in compression, uh, our governing equation is going to be, um, uh, well, if, where essentially, you know, n star, our demand has to be less than or equal to phi uh, n sub s, um, where phi n sub s equals uh, phi, where you know phi is going to equal uh, 0 0.9 for our our member, and that's going to be phi times uh, k sub f um, times the net area uh, multiplied by the uh, yield stress of the section. And over here on the right hand um, margin, I'm just going to keep a reference column. Uh, the reference for here, this is uh, coming just out of NZS 3404 uh, in section 6.2.1.1. Um, so, uh, well, we have phi equals 0 0.9. In order to get the uh, section capacity, um, what we need to determine is, um, you know, really what this, this KF factor is and what this AN factor is. Um, we will just go through and we'll work out uh, quite quickly this AN uh, simply equals the gross area uh, because there's no holes in the section. And we just know that there's no holes in the section because that's told to us here in the brief. So um, you can assume that this is going to be uh, just a, a normal, uh, you know, run-of-the-mill uh, section, which we're, you know, we're, we don't have a, a column splice or anything in there. Um, and then uh, FY is, is given to us, um, so we can either take uh, the, the lowest amount or we can take uh, a weighted average of these as part of the standard. Uh, but this KF factor is the uh, sort of where, where the, the heart of the calculations are going to be, and the KF uh, is just equal to the effective area uh, divided by the net area. And the effective area is the sum of the effective widths um, multiplied by uh, the thickness. And that's from uh, I equal one to N. And now it says effective width times the thickness. What we're going to do is we're going to investigate uh, for the flange and for the web uh, what their slenderness ratio is. And um, are they likely to uh, be uh, subjected to local buckling before they yield? Or will we be able to yield the entire section? If they're going to buckle um, prior to yield, then we will um, account for that by really just discounting uh, the width of, uh, of the section and having a, a slightly smaller area. And so what we'll do is we'll do this, uh, we only, because we have the symmetric section, uh, we only need to do it for, we need to only check our slenderness for one flange, but we have one, two, three, four of these um, uh, flanges adding, or flange outstands adding on, and one web. So um, let's, uh, let, let's start with this. Um, and I guess I'll just write another note here just on this FY before we get going. FY, um, use the uh, minimum FY of the section. And uh, this too is just coming straight out of 6.2.1.1. So, uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to check our flange slenderness. So, And 
and our flange slenderness limit, we're going to look at lambda e. Uh, we'll call it lambda e of f. Well, that just equals the outstand um, divided by the thickness of the flange multiplied fy over 250. So b1, as we can see up here, uh, just the outstand of the flange. Well, that's just going to be the width of the flange, um, subtracting out uh, the web. Uh, and then dividing it by two. And so um, that will give us, so if we uh, work that out, uh, we have uh, 228 millimeters, which is the width of the flange here, um, minus the thickness of the web, 10.6. Uh, and then we will uh, divide that by two. Um, so that gets us B1. And then while we're here, we'll also uh, divide by the thickness of the flange uh, to get our slenderness, which is 14.8 millimeters. And then we'll divide by 300 over 250 square root. As I said, even though the uh, FY of the flange um, is 300, you'll see when we do the web, uh, we'll also use this 300. Again, this just comes straight out of the standard saying that we should, um, we can either take a weighted average of what our yield stresses are uh, across the, uh, the section, um, or we can uh, just take the minimum when we calculate the compression capacity. Um, for this example, I'm just going to go ahead and take the minimum, as I've said before. So if we work all of this out, uh, we get lambda EF equals 8.04. And uh, now what we need to do is we need to go to our standard and uh, compare our slenderness ratio for the outstand of the flange uh, to what our yield uh, slenderness limits are um, from the standard. So uh, doing that, just kicking over to the standard. Um, and what we will see, I'll just scroll up here. Um, in table 6.2.4, um, we can look at our plate element type, and you'll see that we have a flat plate um, with one outstand, and uh, it's a UB, so it's a hot rolled section, so we use the, the HR residual stresses, so you can see hot rolled. So our yield slenderness limit is 16. So coming back to our calculations, we have lambda, EY of a flange equals 16, and that's table 6.2.4. Um, well, uh, this is uh, sort of good news. So, yeah, that's, you know, you've got lambda EF equal to 8.04 is less than lambda EY equal to 16. So that means that we will have no local buckling of the flange. Um, and then that means that we can take advantage of the full, full width of the flange uh, because it will develop its entire, uh, it will yield across this entire section. So that now that when we're calculating our our alpha E, we know that at least for the flanges, uh, we can count on that full area yielding. Uh, the next thing to check is our web. Um, so we'll check our web slenderness next. And you know, lambda E sub W equals D1 over the um, thickness of the web. Again, this is just sort of this unbraced length right here. And um, that's just going to equal, again, we're just pulling straight out of our, uh, our table here. Uh, we have 572 over 10.6 times, and again, I'm going to use the, uh, the minimum FY um, for the entire section. So even though the FY of the web, the yield stress of the web is 320, 
I'm going to look at it for uh, 300 over 250. Um, and that gets us a lambda EW equal to 59.1. Uh, looking up in table 6.2.4, um, we can then see, you know, for a plate element where we have, uh, this is essentially case two, uh, where we have uh, both ends longitudinally supported. So you have to uh, bear with me here. There was a, an issue with the PDF and everything got kind of shifted over a little bit. Uh, a hot rolled section, you see that we have a yield slenderness limit of 45. So let's compare that to what we had. So uh, lambda e y w equals 45. And again, that's also from table 6.2.4. So um, lambda e w is less than, well, we'll do it over here. Um, Lambda E W. So uh, we basically were were more eh, well. You know, let me let me rewrite that to a little to basically the same same way we have up here. We're going to say the same thing, but we'll just have consistency in our calculations, where lambda E W equal fifty nine point one is greater than our yield slenderness limit um, for our web equal to forty five. And that means uh, web will undergo local buckling. Um, so, you know, what, what do we need to do next? Well, we need to... Um, <clears throat> come through here and uh, essentially uh, reset the um, uh, the effective width of our of our element. So you know if we're having a um, you know so you know the flanges uh, we can we can take advantage of the full width of there because you know they're they're stockier than what our yield limit is. So they will yield over the uh, entire section before. Um, before buckling. However, uh, our web, uh, not the case, we will undergo some local buckling. So we need to <clears throat> account for that by uh, essentially ignoring the part of uh, the web which will undergo local buckling, which will be this middle here, um, and essentially just reduce the, uh, the depth accordingly. So uh, the way that we do that is, again, we'll just step back to our um, uh, our uh, standard here, uh, we look at the effective width. So if we just roll back up here uh, for the effective width, uh, the standard uses B, but it's the same uh, same value uh, for if we are doing it as a um, you know a, a, a depth where we just take the original depth, we multiply it by the ratio of um, what that yield slenderness limit was to the slenderness limit for that element. And that's how we, uh, we end up with that. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Let's just call this uh, D uh, sub E for our effective depth. Uh, that's just going to equal uh, the original depth. Um, and we'll just call that D1 um, times lambda ey of the web over lambda e of the web. And so uh, just plugging in numbers, uh, d1, uh, 572, and then we have 45 and 59.1 for our respective slenderness limits. So uh, checking that in, we get 572 times 45 over 59.1, 
and that equals uh, 435.5 millimeters. So um, now that we have that, well, we can work out what our total um, uh, effective area is. So that's our A sub E. Um, and uh, essentially all this is, you know, if we remember, uh, this is the same as just, you know, summing up uh, each of these little areas uh, here. Well, um, you know, that's, that, that's, the, that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at it in a slightly different way where, you know, if we can count on all of the uh, flanges um, and we can count on most of the web except the middle, what's going to buckle, uh, then what we can do is sort of work backwards and we can just take the gross area, which we already know, and we can just subtract out uh, this little portion, uh, which is just going to be uh, this that's going to buckle. Uh, this is really just the difference between um, these uh, depth D1 and the effective depth D1. So uh, just putting that down in, uh, in sort of you know, a little bit more formally here. That's just going to be our gross area minus D1 minus D sub E uh, multiplied by the thickness of the web. And if we do that, we get 1300 millimeters squared minus 572 minus uh, we'll just round to 436 uh, times 10.6. So, I mean, that, that's all we just talked about right here. We're just taking the gross area, and essentially, we're just subtracting this part out. And, and that's what our effective area is. Um, and if we do all of that, we get A sub E equals 11,558 millimeters squared. So uh, now that we have this A sub E, we can go back and we can work out uh, what our K factor is, which is just A sub E over um, the net area. So our effective area over our net area. KF equals AE over AN equals 11,558 divided by, uh, sorry, this is supposed to be 13,000, not 1,300. So uh, apologies there for that small typo, uh, 13,000. And uh, that gives us a K of F equal to 0 0.888. And this means that, you know, only, you know, we're, we're you know, if, if we load this entire section in compression, um, about 11% of it is, um, is, is going, we, we can't count on. Uh, it's going to buckle. And it's just sort of this middle portion here, which means we can take, uh, you know, 89%, so nearly 90% of the total area is going to be effective in compression. That's all this KF factor is telling us here. So, uh, working that out, uh, what we get is, uh, so phi ns equals phi kf times an times fy. We get 0 0.9 for our phi factor times 0 0.888 um, times... 13,000 times 300 megapascal. And we work out and we get a section capacity in compression of 300 and um, 3,120 kilonewtons. 
Um, and then just before we wrap up, um, let's just draw out what, um, you know, really what this effective section would look like and, and you know, where we're, we're getting all of this um, capacity from. So if I just draw out and just roughly sketch um, our, our section here, well, and then I'll just shade in the area which is effective. And so it's this entire width here, um, you know, B sub F. And um, we just go back, uh, that equals 228 millimeters. Thickness of our flange. 14.8, thickness of the web, 10.6, and then, um, like I say, it's this middle uh, which has buckled. So, you know, if we just draw yeah, some dimensions for that, uh, again, really just to kind of illustrate it here, um, we get, this is 218 millimeters, which just equals D of E over 2. This is 218 millimeters. Again, D of E over 2. Um, and this metal, uh, we neglect because it has uh, buckled. So um, this is kind of, you know, just you know, kind of wrap up here with this little uh, sketch showing, you know, what the section capacity, what this effective section uh, would look like where um, as we're taking this effective depth, uh, because we assume that this middle portion has buckled here, uh, so we'll just neglect its capacity and uh, we'll only take the portions which uh, can develop full plasticity uh, yielding across the section. So with that, we'll wrap this uh, example up, and thanks for watching.